Okay, just testing to see if this is working. I don't know, are we? Okay, so we're live now in the event. I'm hoping. Can somebody say hi or something like that on this post? Because we're having. Okay, just refresh because I am seeing something. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Of course, we always got technical issues. And when we've gone to hit live, it said broadcast has ended uh, or it wouldn't actually broadcast. So we're hoping that everything is working fine now so we can get into our cooking class. So just give me a moment to make sure that I can see that everything is working okay. Okay, I can see that we are live. Awesome. Okay, so thanks for joining me in my kitchen. For those of you who don't know me, I am Megan. Obviously, it's on my page. And we do lots of low-carb keto recipes. Today, I'm going to be doing a few dishes, basically for Dave and I, my partner and myself, for the week. And I thought I would just share some simple, easy dishes from our cookbooks and from our website so everyone else can make them at home. Okay, so what we'll be making definitely is chili beef pot pies, our marry me chicken, which is one of our new recipes on the website. Uh, the link is in the event, so you actually just have to go to more in the event and you'll actually get the link directly to marry me chicken. And we're also making the loaded cheeseburger soup from our new ebook, Super Tasty. So let's get into it. Uh, today I will be doing two of the recipes in the Thermomix, just for convenience for me. And the marry me chicken we'll do on the portable hot plate just so I don't have my back to you the whole time. Uh, but every recipe of ours always has conventional methods and I'll explain as we're going through what we um, would do differently if we were doing it on the stove top or in a multi cooker. Okay, so first up, I am going to start with the chili beef pot pies. This is a favorite recipe of mine. It doesn't actually have a pastry. It actually has a yogurt and sour cream and eggy top. It sounds really weird. And when I first made it, I'm like, oh, I hope this works. Uh, but it turned out really lovely. So it is a very easy recipe to make. And this one, we're going to do the whole thing in uh, the Thermomix today. Normally, I would prefer to brown the beef in a pan for it. But I thought I would show the whole thing in the thermi for those of you who like to do it that way. So what I've done with all of the recipes, I'm sure you can see a little bit of my countertop here, is I've put like your mise en place, I've put all the ingredients that I can onto trays so that I don't miss anything while I'm following the recipe. All our recipes, that's just our oven getting to temperature. All our recipes do have all the ingredients in order as in the method. The ingredients are in specific orders, usually because the recipe will turn out best that way. So if you try and jumble it around, you A, might miss out on ingredients and B, you might actually, in some instances, ruin the recipe because there's certain things that need to be done at certain times for that recipe to work out. Today, when I went through my pantry, I noticed that I was missing tomato paste. So we're going to use in this recipe, which usually uses um, one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste and half a cup of chopped tomatoes. I'm using a tomato puree just because it's that little bit thicker. So again, I'm just using things that I've got in my uh, pantry. So let's get started. Um, I've just turned my Thermomix on and I'm going to be putting in the spices first and um, heating the spices just to make them a little bit more fragrant. So first up we've got, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it first. First up, we've got cayenne pepper. Uh, if you have any of my recipes, like this one is a chili beef pot pie, if you don't like spicy, swap it. Like you could put more smoky or sweet paprika in. Uh, put less in if you only want a little bit of a, a hit. Um, but yeah, that's totally up to you. Spices are, I think, are always should be adjusted to your personal tastes. We're just adding half a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of coriander. So I've got those. I've got all these lovely little bowls that help me <laughs> do everything. This, if you were doing this from home, it would be so much easier just doing it straight from your containers and a lot less washing up that I'm about to do today. 
Um, I've got a tablespoon. Have I got a tablespoon there? Uh, hang on, I must have looked at another one of the recipes. It's still supposed to be half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, but I think I've seen that. And that's where like prepping three recipes at the same time, you end up with something wrong on your list. So one of them will probably have a tablespoon of smoked paprika, or is it just because I'm usually such a smoked paprika person? Anyway, we've put in all our spices. I'm just going to pop my lid on. Now, if you were doing this on your hot plate, you just put it into a dry pan and you're just going to heat it over high heat, uh, medium high heat. Two minutes for this one. Oops, no, we don't want to do that. Two minutes. 90 degrees. And just speed stir. So if you don't have our cookbook, you can follow this recipe and write it down as we go. So the ingredients for this one is half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Again, remember you can just adjust that spice if you like. Half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of ground coriander, half a teaspoon of paprika. I tend to use smoked paprika. It's a smoked sweet paprika. paprika. That's a hard one to say all in one sentence. Um, but you can use sweet paprika or a Hungarian paprika, which tends to be a smoked paprika anyway. We're going to put those all in there. They're all on just... It will just heat it slightly in here, but in a dry pan, it, you would actually, once you smell the flavors coming through, you can turn the heat down and then we and um, put them aside and then we're gonna cook the onions and bacon and garlic. So that is something that I did have out here somewhere. A lot of you always say, I don't have garlic paste. This is the one that I use. It's in virtually every Coles and Woolies supermarket. I even think like IGAs and that tend to have them in their fruit and veg section. It is just garlic and it is blended. Uh, I use these all the time. I'm not sponsored by them. I've got nothing to do with Gourmet Garden, but it's a great product. So I always have in my fridge the garlic, the ginger, the lemongrass and the chili and I use a lot of them, of course, for what I do. But I... Uh, in my books you'll find, or in my recipes you'll find that I write garlic paste. This is what I'm referring to. If you don't have it, you can easily just mince your garlic, uh, chop your garlic, use confit garlic, whichever garlic you prefer. It's just what I like to use. Okay, so just checking everyone can see me. Uh, have made marry me chicken very quick and nice. And yes, we're loving the quick recipes at the moment. Um, I do... Is this recipe the same for a TM5, Emma? Yes, it is. So yeah, you, this one particularly you could do even in the TM31 in the smaller bowl. Okay, so we've just heated that one up. I'm just going to put that... I've used up all my bowls. How about we just put it back into one of those? I think it'll all fit. So we just take that out. Megan trying not to... Just dump it all over my um, cutting board as I would probably do <laughs> myself normally. Okay, I'm not even gonna clean the bowl or anything like that. I'm just going, and I would do the same. It would come out of your non-stick pan or your cast iron pans easier anyway. So now I'm just gonna add in my oil. Did I put any oil there? Oh, I really read this recipe, right, haven't I? Um, I've got my oil here. We're gonna just add in a tablespoon of oil. If you don't want to use the oil, you can leave it out. So it will reduce fat. Um, of course, for every tablespoon of fat, there is the equivalent. For every gram of fat, there's the gram of fat. So every gram of oil. So if you've got 20 grams of oil in your recipe, you've got 20 grams of fat. Okay, and fat is normally in calories. You times that by nine to work out your calories. So that adds a lot of calories. Um, so now we're going to add in 400 grams of beef mince and... Uh, two bacon rashers. Now I've just actually just got my mince here. Uh, this one's actually a lean one. Normally I use an 80-20, but I bought, uh, got this delivered from our local butcher. And I've got rindless bacon. With bacon, you can always use whatever you like. If you like just the eye cut, you like uh, you know to use the whole rash, including the rind, use whatever you want. Up to you. So I'm just going to pop that in there. I've got a little spatula around here somewhere. Oh, it's over here. So I'm just going to spread it around just a little bit inside the Thermomix bowl because I'll just show you. 
Because when you're cooking in one of these sort of um, appliances, obviously it's a smaller base, so you want to make sure that it's at least evenly distributed when you first put it in. I think we've got all our ingredients in there now, so now we're going to cook that. So that's the oil, mince, bacon and garlic, which I didn't put in. And that is just here. So I just squeeze in my teaspoon of garlic and I'm going to cook that for five minutes. 120. 100, sorry, 100 degrees. Got to get it right. It's been a while since I made this one. And we're going to cook this one in reverse. So uh, depending on your model of machine or I've got the Magi Mix in that as well too, you can turn on it to no blade and just put that on stir, okay? So we're going to cook that one for five minutes. So for those of you writing the recipe down, we put in 20 grams of oil, which is one tablespoon, 40, uh, 40 grams, 400 grams or 14 ounces of beef mince, two rashes of bacon. I always write the weight of the bacon in there because that's what I've calculated your macros for in all of our recipes. And because as we know, like if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you might get like Canadian bacon, like really thinly cut bacon, there's thick cut bacon. We all know there's lots of different ones. Uh, so that was just 100 grams of bacon and one clove of garlic finely minced. When that one's done, we're going to add the remaining ingredients and cook it for 20 minutes in that. So if we were doing this in the frying pan, we'd be just cooking it over a moderate to high heat, stirring only as it needs it. Like I would always brown beef. I like wait till it goes brown and then I turn it over. And you can break it up as clumpy or unclumpy as you wish. Uh, the Thermomix will tend to break it down more uh, when the liquid is added. Okay, so for now, that one is on for five minutes. We'll come back to that, but we might start on our cheeseburger soup because I'll just do the marry me chicken. That's the last one. Well, right on here, so it's nice and easy for everybody. Okay, so again, we're going to do the Thermi. I've got the TM5 hiding behind here for anyone that was just asking about the um, TM5. I have both of these models and I have a TM21, not the 31, uh, which is a lot smaller. It's just sitting over there next to the Magimix. So we've got a few here. Um, okay, so for this one, the loaded cheeseburger soup, the ingredients are, if you don't have the ebook, one tablespoon of butter or olive oil, uh, half a small onion diced, one teaspoon of garlic paste, 500 grams of beef mince, three rashes of bacon, uh, 300 grams of tomato puree, two teaspoons of yellow mustard, and I've actually written that here. Um, well, we grew up, we called it American mustard. Americans call it yellow mustard, so we just call it yellow mustard. <laughs> um, so you can use uh, quite a few brands of virtually no carbs. This one's like says less than one or 4.5 per 100. It's not a lot. Um, you don't use a lot anyway. But I like to, in saying that, I do like to drizzle extra on the top of this soup. We have one teaspoon of smoked paprika, two cups of beef stock. Um, I am using the Urban Forager stock paste with just water. So if you see them already made up, you can use any stock cubes, bone broth uh, or beef stock from the supermarket if you wish, or your own homemade stuff. Black pepper and salt flakes. As I always mention about salt flakes, don't use ones with iodine in them, like iodized salt flakes. In low carb cooking where we use more salt, uh, iodized salt is really bitter. So I always just use sea salt. And if you're using pink Himalaya salt, that can be a lot saltier. Uh, in this, we've also got a third of a cup of cream cheese and a quarter cup of thickened or heavy cream and one cup of Mexican shredded cheddar. Uh, these are quite readily available in Coles and Woolies now and a lot of the um, smaller independent grocers. They're, it's a mixture of just a yellow cheddar and cheddar, I think. I think that's all that's pretty much in it. Uh, I like them. If you can get to like chef supplies and stuff like that and get like the jack cheese, that is like just the best cheese, I, I think, as far as the cheddar goes. It's got a little bit more flavour. And I love the colour uh, with the orange cheddar that it adds to cooking visually. Then we've got some dill pickles, which I have just diced and they're gonna go on the top. The dill pickles that I use is just the Polsky Ogorki. There's no sugar in this one. Pretty sure there's no sugar in it. Nope. So 
Look in the supermarket when you're looking for these sort of things because a lot of them look fantastic. Like honestly, I've looked at so many brands and see heaps that I love the look of, but then I'll look in the ingredients and they've got sugar in them. So that's just not worth it. Plus, if you go to eat one of them after you haven't eaten sugar like myself in five years, it tastes pretty damn sweet. Okay, so that's all the ingredients we've got for this one. That's got 30 seconds to go. What I'm going to tell you though is, okay, so for both methods, we brown off the beef and onion with this one, um, with the garlic. And I have put it somewhere. It just came off the frying pan just before I went live. So what I did is I had a kilo of beef today and I'm using some in there and some in here. But rather than have any leftovers that I have to, you know, vacuum seal or whatever and freeze, I decided I'd cook it all in this and I will use some for the soup. But then, you know, it's a quick and easy dish to throw in with some, say, sauteed zucchini or broccoli or something like that for a nice easy meal as well throughout the week. So instead of freezing it raw, I've got some beef, bacon and garlic. I didn't increase the garlic or the bacon um, and I actually didn't use, where I used a tablespoon butter or oil, I actually didn't use any fat in the pan. I've got a great um, pan over there that nothing sticks to anyway, so I didn't need the extra fat, so I just didn't put it in there. Now, I'm going to just quickly look at this. We're going to go back to the chili beef pies because this is what we're doing. We're juggling our meals when we're going to meal prep for a whole week. Uh, I don't know, I'd love to see how many of you actually meal prep on a regular basis. I do and I don't. Of course I meal prep because I'm making recipes and photographing them and doing a lot of things all in one and in some days we might cook 10 plus dishes in one day and I'm photographing them all so there is meals for more than a week <laughs> and for more than just us. So, but I'd like to know how many people actually meal prep because you know it's something that I'm looking at doing more of in the future and more classes like this where we might even just do basic simple recipes with just whatever ingredients I've got in the pantry each week and then not even in a you know on the website or anything like that it's just using what we've got on hand and creating something nice that's still low carb because everything in my house is all low carb anyway so it's quite easy to do okay so if we're going to put in the remaining ingredients into this so uh, at that stage we already had with that was the meat so we can see here that it is quite um, fine now and the bacon's all still nice and chunky. We're going to add our spices back wherever I put them. Okay, so we've got our spices back in there um, and it doesn't all want to come out. Excuse my fingers. Uh, one of my secret ingredients in, all <laughs> in some recipes, and it's making me laugh because we had a little bit of jokey argument on the Facebook group just the other day, Vegemite. Uh, you can get gluten-free Vegemite for our celiacs and those who are completely gluten-free. I don't mind a little bit of the gluten that's in the Vegemite, it doesn't bother me. Uh, but it's fantastic in sauces, it adds a real umami flavour, it's like salty deliciousness. It's perfect in a lot of the Asian sauces and that as well too, but I find it really great in uh, a lot of my Mexican recipes and that as well too. So that one is just like uh, one tablespoon of uh, chipotles in adobo, which you can just buy in any supermarket and that as well. Instead of our tablespoon and a half of tomato paste and our quarter of a uh, half a cup of tomatoes, we're using the, I'm just adding just the half a cup still, uh, of tomato puree. And tomato puree is still quite low carb, considering tomatoes have carbs. Uh, it just doesn't have any added sugar. It's just, I think they're just basically tomatoes and salt. Uh, we've got our half a cup of a beef stock. Okay, and that should be all we're adding in at this stage. So off the recipe, the Vegemite, the tomato paste, the chipotle's in adobo, and the beef stock. Um, and, well, we didn't use the tomato paste, we used the tomato puree. So I'm going to pop the lid back onto that one and I'm going to cook it for 20 minutes at 120 degrees. 120. Reverse. Always make sure you're putting on that reverse. Stir. When there's a lot of liquid in a dish like um, the soups and things, you don't need to really put it in reverse because it tends not to chop, it's just stirring regardless if you've got it on the slow stirring feature function. Um, but it's just when it's like low, like if you 
put the mince in the bacon and you don't put it on reverse, it will definitely <laughs> chop it up a little bit more than it does. Okay, so that's as simple as that. Now, for anyone who hasn't got one of these appliances, people think that it's only people who can't cook have one of these. Da -da, wrong, there's lots of them in a lot of the best chef's kitchens globally. Uh, but the one thing that I really love about it is, it was funny because I was cooking something the other day and I actually couldn't leave the kitchen. And that's what I found really annoying. I love the fact that I could actually put this on, go upstairs, and if I wanted to blow dry my hair or if I've got kids and I've got to put them down or get them ready for school or whatever, I've got that going. It's safe, right? So as long as you're not doing kneading dough or something like that where if it's a really stiff dough and the machine rocks and it's at risk of falling off the bench, <laughs> that, that hasn't happened to me, but... Um, you know, that it, it's, it's safe to leave it rather than if you've got something on a hot plate because we all know that that can quickly turn into danger. Like the other day, I put something on, thought I turned it off, turned it all the way up to full whack and was out the front of the house. I could smell it. I ran out here. It didn't burn, but like I could smell the sauce really sizzling. I'm like, I didn't turn that off because mine has a click to full temperature and, a, and another click to go off and I hadn't turned it far enough. Okay, so anyway, that's the chili beef pies. In. and the only ingredients that you can see if you can see them at the top there is the top of the pie that will go on when I'm done um, and just remembering I'll just get one out oops that I didn't get out any ramekins just to show you how it's done okay so that one can go over to there now let's get this cheeseburger soup on so as we discussed, we've already browned the beef and the bacon and garlic, and I didn't use any of the butter oil that is in the recipe. If you want to add the extra fat, add as extra, add as extra, add, add as much extra butter and oil to your meat as you like. It will make it nice and crispy, and that as well too. Where mine, the fat did come out, and there is browned beef, uh, brown bits on the, the beef, which I really like. Uh, but if you want it super crispy and that, then heat the oil and then throw it all in and you'll get some nice um, char on the meat. Okay, so we've done all that bit. So um, the thermal method for this one says to follow step one above, which is browning it, and then pour the contents of the pot into the mixer, add a little stock to the pot to, uh, to deglaze. Oh, sorry, that's just if you were deglazing the pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just some of this meat. Now, when you're making this soup at home too, what you can do is you can just reserve, if you're doing like the full, the standard 500 grams of beef mince, and you can reduce that if you like as well, leave a little bit rather than put it all into the pot. I might've put it in the notes anyway. I like to just put a little bit on the top. So you've got like meat, which looks, I think, visually appealing. A little bit of the cheeseburger on the top. So you actually put like a little bit of the beef, a little bit of the pickles, a little bit of the mustard. You could even put some tomato sauce in it on if you want. Um, so <laughs> I would reserve some just to sprinkle on the top. In here, okay, so this one is from my cheeseburger. We're going to be adding the half a cup, is it? Um, tomato puree. No, it's actually 300 grams of tomato puree. Now, you can see this is the cup measure. It only comes up to 250. I only had 250 left after I'd put the other bit into my other recipe. That's fine. Don't go opening up another can if you don't need it. Um, you could always like, I've got some cherry tomatoes over there. I actually didn't even think of that. I could have just chopped some up and thrown it in if I wanted to. But, you know, it's not going to make or break the recipe. If anything, it only reduces the carbs by an extra 50 grams of tomatoes. So, woohoo. Okay, so we've got our mustard. So our yellow mustard. I'm just going to grab a spoon. Like I said, normally I would just squeeze this straight out of the container into the bowl, but... Uh, getting out all the ingredients first can really help. We do get a lot of people saying, I follow the recipe to a T and one look at some of them and you know that something was missing out of the ingredients. And I honestly, I've done it myself, so it's, it's no biggie. Okay, so we've got our smoked paprika. One teaspoon of smoked paprika. So for anyone just tuning in now, this one we're making a loaded cheeseburger soup and we're adding two cups of beef stock. Just making sure that I'm not going over everything that I needed to. In goes my beef stock. And I'll just grab all of these. Pop them in the sink. If anyone wants to come around and do the washing up when I'm done. 
Will be handy. Uh, okay, so now we're going to season with salt and pepper. So like I said, just good old fashioned sea salt flakes. No fiddling with it, just salt. Add as little or as much as you like. And pepper. With most pepper grinders, little tip, should only ever rotate the top in one direction. None of this stuff. That's really not nice to your pepper grinders. Should always be spin in one direction. Um, okay, so we've seasoned, and now we're going to cook that one for 15 minutes at 100 degrees reverse stir. Okay, so that one's on. Uh, and when that's done, we've just got to add a couple more ingredients, and we go. Okay, so let's get i marry me chicken ready. So you're starting to see this is pretty easy to make. At the same time, um, I've been on live for probably 30 minutes and jabbered probably more than I've cooked. But if you've got your chili beef pot pies on, if you make this, like, so this recipe makes four pies and you're only cooking for two like I am, you might do two pies for one meal. With the other one, you might decide to do that in a stuffed zucchini boat with our keto pasta, use the pasta sheets as a lasagna sheet. So cut them into whatever size lasagna you want to do it. You can do it in cast iron pots and do it on a, even a hot plate. You don't even need an oven for that or you can do it in your air fryer. Um, you could do them with a wrap, anything. So, okay, so I've just got some chicken here that I haven't actually taken out yet. I'm just going to get that meat out of the way. This is my clean board. Okay, we'll do couple of these. I'm just going to pop that in here and fix that up later. can rest on top of a huge big vac sealed pack of uh, brisket. Doing a bit of cooking. <laughs> okay so for the chicken you want to actually like cut them into like thin well butterfly the breast out. And then you can cut them into what I would do as like a serve. Like I'm not going to pound this out, but I might like that just as a serve. Um, and rather than just make them really ugly, we might just try and make them some kind of shape. Okay, so we've got little ones again. You probably don't get to see me do a lot of stuff with the knife. But trust me, knives are mostly in my hands all the time. Okay. Okay. So I've just prepped my chicken that's on this board, so we won't be using this board again. Uh, and we're going to grill this one. I'm going to have a lot of fun. If you've seen me before, I love using this um, portable hot plate. It makes me a little bit anxious because I can't tell. I, I might even struggle to turn the damn thing on, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I am going to use the same pan that I just used for my beef. I'm not even cleaning it. It won't spill. All it'll do is add a little bit of flavour. Um, for anyone asking any questions, this is one of the Ninja Zero stick pans. They're not treated or anything, I think they're stone. Um, I need to look up the information about them. Bloody amazing. Nothing has stuck to this damn thing yet. So I'm going to turn that on. Um, we're going to do maybe medium. I really don't know how to work this thing yet. We'll check it on medium and see how we go. <laughs> okay. So this dish is so simple. Now, one thing that I did, so for those of you who've already made it and it's getting lots of rave reviews and if you have made it and haven't left a review on the website yet, if you can, I would love that. That's how we actually get our recipes to move up onto the front page of Google so people can actually find it. Uh, I made this one with our Pesto Rosso recipe, which is also on the website. It's made with sun-dried tomatoes and almonds and is really delicious. I don't have any sun-dried tomatoes. So, I'm not bothered. I've got heaps of roasted red peppers. I've got tomatoes. I could have dried some if I had more time or whatever. But the thing is, I'm like, 
you know, realistically, if I take out some of these red peppers and dice it really finely, it'll give it a nice flavor and color and that as well too. And if you've ever had a fire roasted red pepper cream sauce, it's to die for too. So these ones are ones that are already done. You can buy them in all your supermarkets where you get all your pickles and stuff like that from. So it's in the sauce aisle. Um, might just use that amount there. And we're going to finally chop that one up just as an extra ingredient. I just didn't pre-prep it because I wanted you to see uh, that we um, can use substitutes when you want. Okay. So where's my marry me chicken? So ingredients for this one, you can get it on the website. Um, you can print off the recipes just like I have done. Uh, and you, even when you're printing off the recipes, whether you're in, say, the US and you want it all in the uh, US customary measures, you can actually change it to print in that way as well too, or you can print in metric. And you can leave the nutrition on and the notes on or take them off in that as well too. And you can have the picture if you want it, which I haven't. Uh, so there's a few little check boxes at the top when you go to print uh, for you to print it your personal way. So... This one, I'm just going to get this chicken on because this pan gets hot really quickly. Uh, I got my thing over here because I'm guessing. Yep. Okay. Oh, hang on. I won't use that one. I actually put the oil. oil little, 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 I actually put the oil into a little container for this one. Okay. So we're going to put our oil in. I'm using the oil, of course, for this one because it's chicken breast and it has very little um, fat or anything like that on it, and I'm using skinless ones. The skin on would be not quite so nice in the creamy sauce, I don't think anyway. So we've heated the griddle pan, brushed the breast with oil, I did it the other way around, and sear until golden, four to five minutes each side. So let's see if we can cook these. I'm just gonna do that one, that amount. It's really bad because it takes the heat off when I lift it. Uh, so I don't want to overcrowd the, the pan. If we overcrowd the pan, what that does is it makes it stew. So it'll make it make the pan cooler quicker, cook the chicken at a lower temperature, and it doesn't sear it as nicely. So I'm going to pop that back in here, and we'll just do something else with that later. I'm going to move this out of the way now. For those of you who don't use them, always put a mat underneath your board. It stops the boards from moving around while you're cutting. It makes it a lot safer. Uh, for somebody who worked in commercial kitchens for 13 years, I have scars on me. I have had microsurgery on one of my fingers and stuff like that. Um, and I do everything I can to always be safe with knives and I treat them with respect. You know, a knife is not for these kind of beautiful knives that it might cost you several hundreds of dollars and not for opening up your last delivery from Australia Post, for instance. <laughs> now, I've got some tongs here somewhere. Okay, so we're just gonna let that sear. Now, when I cook chicken or any kind of meat, I try and allow it to brown before I turn it. So you're only turning once maybe twice in the whole time. Okay, both of those are still on. We've got six minutes on one, seven minutes on the other. That's cheeseburger, I don't need to look at that. Marry me chicken. Okay, so we've got our chicken in sizzling. If I was doing this from scratch, I'd be gathering all my ingredients while I'm doing it. In the same pan, you can add the garlic and saute for one to two minutes. Deglaze the pan with the broth, because when we do the chicken, we take the chicken out and put it on a plate. So I'll get out my plate. That should go on when it's ready. So I've got my garlic ready. I've got fresh thyme from the garden. Uh, so it'll be the garlic saute, deglaze with the broth. I've got my little bit of chicken broth. Again, I'm just using the urban forager one, but like I said, you can use any. Uh, I have all different kinds. I have the little pods, I have cubes. The cubes tend to be full of crap, realistically. Um, and then we're going to add the thyme paprika. Again, I'm using the smoked paprika, salt and pepper, pesto, which I'm going to chop this up in a minute, and cream and stir. So all I'm going to do, I'm not sure how much you're seeing here, is just finely dice. 
the roasted capsicum. So you could do this with any kind of pesto, if you had any pestos in the fridge or your pantry. Uh, a little bit of tomato paste is always lovely in a sauce too. Like you could fake a sun-dried tomato kind of pesto or a sun-dried tomato flavour if you wanted to. Uh, a little bit of tomato paste, a little bit of garlic, which we already got in the sauce. Uh, any of your favourite seasonings and stuff like that, I would just pop them in. But I used to do a lot of uh, Italian pasta sauces back in the day uh, in restaurants and stuff like that with tomato creams and they were always so popular. Okay, I can see this is starting to uh, come pale on this side so I'm just going to flip it over because I'm not knowing this pan. If I was doing it on my hot plate I'd know exactly where I am. Let's have a quick look and see if I've got any questions here. I'm going to use the pesto rosso as pizza sauce tonight too. Yeah, it's so nice. I was really surprised. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a huge sun-dried tomato fan. I used to love the semi-dried tomatoes that aren't in oil. I used to use them in a lot of, uh, again, pasta sort of sauces or pizza yola sauce and stuff like that on top of chicken, but not a huge uh, tomato fan. Do you always hand wash your Ninja Pan? Yes. Uh, I have a dishwasher here that is the, I think it's the original one that came with the house. Our house is around about 20 years old. Uh, we've been here for 15 years, since 2008, 14 years, um, 15 years. And um, I ha have started to use it more nowadays just because I've got like, lots of things. If I've done all these sort of pot stuff, I'll just chuck them all in and do it. But I tend to clean most of my bowls, my Thermomix bowls um, and my pans always just with uh, running hot water and the detergent and then I clean them and I tend to dry them and put them straight away. So yeah, and these, like amazing, right? It's probably the best pan that I've tried that's just like this. And I've used them and used them and used them. Um, since we got them, they were given to me by Ninja, but I should say, um, but we're not sp sponsored by them or affiliated with them. And the only other ones that I would use is I just recently got the new Solid Technics ones that are lighter weight, because I've got some of the heavier weight ones too. And I wouldn't use the heavyweight ones for a live video for a start, because they're too weighty <laughs> to lift. But I try and not use heavy, um, too, too much heavy equipment, like you've got cast iron Dutch ovens and stuff which are quite heavy. But for my pants, I'll tend to like to like something that's still got a bit of weight to it, not too flimsy, but um, yeah, they're a really good pan. I just love this one with the wider sides. You could cook a crustless quiche in it, you could cook a cake in it, you could cook a damper in it. It's got a lid that fits it too. Uh, cooking bacon, cook bacon in there, put your lid on and it doesn't splash fat everywhere. So even now, like I could actually just put the lid on that and cook that chicken a little bit quicker and that as well too, but I just don't want it to stew. <laughs> just laughing about Dee's comments about the washing up. Okay, so what, pan, oh, what brand of pan do you use, please? So yeah, it is the Ninja. So it's a Ninja Zero Stick. I think they're available from Paris Scarf. But I'm not sure if that's still going. Just look for it online. You'll find it. I know that they're online somewhere. Uh, and in the pack that I got, I got this one, a two, one small sauce uh, frying pan and a normal size frying pan. This one, big pot and a saucepan. And yeah, they're amazing. I like, honestly, I've, anything I'm just going to do, I just will like use one of these now, um, which is sad because I'd also bought a whole set of the Estelle um, brand, which is really expensive. But I have to say, for me, I found that a pain in the ass to clean. If you've ever used any of those pans where, um, when you use high heat and it goes brown all up the sides on the inside and it's really hard to clean off. And it's like, man, I barely did anything. And every, or every time you fry anything in oil, it like goes black inside the pan. I don't know if anyone's got any tips on those, I'd love to hear them because that, just kills me. It just turns me off using the pans and I 
spent a fortune on getting a whole set of those. So yeah, a bit disappointing. Alrighty, so this is my chili beef. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that is all done. So my chili beef, I'm just gonna find my thing over here. And it looks amazing. So look, you can see it's like really nice meaty still even though I didn't have my tomato paste so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my ramekin I'll just show you one I'm going to have to move some stuff out of the way Oop. I would say that is browned enough you might just juggle this for a second first Just a quick test, everyone can still hear me fine over that sizzling pan, can't they? Because I've got the microphone right here, but I just wanna make sure that that doesn't interfere. Um, okay, so in that pan. So we're gonna add the garlic. I'm just gonna, we'll see how this pan goes. It's like, I'm used to, so used to using gas. So, and even though I had it there in the pan, um, and we're just going to get the, that. That a little bit flavoursome. Glaze the pan with the stock. We're going to add... Um, I'm trying to do it in the order, sorry. Because <laughs> some people don't have this recipe. So we're going to add our um, thyme. I just add the whole thing. Add our paprika. Stir that in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'd add our pesto, but today that is going to be this lovely fire roasted capsicum that I had in the pantry because I didn't have any pesto. So you can just use sun dried tomatoes if you don't want to make the pesto. You can use the um, fire roasted capsicums. You can roast the capsicum. You could use tomato paste. You could use chipotle's in adobo for a smoky one, like a smoky chili one. If you want this to be spicy, add your chili. Uh, for me, pre-keto, every single thing that I ever made, I think had chili in it. Uh, and now I'm gonna add my cream. And I'm gonna turn that down, because this really is hot. Okay, so I've got my cream in there. I'm going to just let that cream, because this is in this pan, thicken a little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop my chicken back in there and I'm going to chuck my parmesan in there. So you can see that that, you probably can't, but it's bubbling like crazy because the heat I think is central on this. I'm just going to add those pan juices back in. Stir that all around. Okay, I'll add in my parmesan shortly, but I'll tell you one thing that I like to do with this. When I put in the parmesan, I'm going to stir it through. I might just keep a bit, sprinkle on the top. Okay, now the parmesan helps to thicken the sauce. You'll see it thicken straight away. I wish I could bring the camera in while I'm doing this, <laughs> but I can't because it's on a mount. Um... But this is really thickening up. Now, this is my tip with this uh, recipe. I've seen a few people make theirs and theirs looks really saucy. I like, if you can see this bubbling, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it, but I lift it up like that. You probably just saw a little short second of it. I like to take this till it's almost gonna hit the split stage. So I do it till I can see that the sauce is really thick and you can smell the parmesan. And while you'll have less sauce with it, trust me, the flavour is to die for. I always hate that I'm in a rush to get these damn things, like, get set up <laughs> for a live. That I never remember to get any of my pretty plates or anything like that ready. So that I can show you how gorgeous it can be when these sort of things are served up. So you can see like this dish is super fast. This you could do with thigh fillets if you prefer the thigh fillets. 
You could do it even with shredded leftover rotisserie chicken. So if you had like, you know, your coals and woolies, coals or woolies, oh, let's turn that off. Um, chicken that you bought for the family or whatever and there's a little bit left over, make this sauce up. Hang on a second, I'm just gonna put my head in the fridge. Yep, that looks okay. Make this sauce up, throw in your leftover chicken. Um, I'm just gonna go through here and pick out a few nice spinach leaves. I was lucky the other day I bought this from Woolies. <laughs> the next day I saw there was a recall, but it was for Coles, so I was lucky. Um, for the same one for salmonella poisoning or something like that, something weird anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna toss all these in. To be honest, I actually have a lot of leaves in the garden that I can um, use as well. We grow bloody sorrel and, uh, oh, what's the other one? It's, um, I think it's actually just green sorrel. And they're always in the garden, but of course I use a lot of greens and stuff like that for photos. So I always have on hand some, and I knew I had some of these here. So I'm just going to get this one out and just show you, hopefully you can see. Let's just see, that looks pretty. Let's do that one. You can discard this time. I'm just gonna like lay that over the top. You can see even with this sauce with the roasted capsicum, we've got a beautiful color. So I'm just gonna show you. A little bit of beautiful sauce there spinach or zoodles or um, our Japanese cucumber salad would be delicious with this too. That's from Keto Mojo. So I'll just drizzle that over the sides. This can go back over to here, out of my way. And then just a little bit of this on the top. We might even just do a little bit of fresh parsley. That wasn't chopped very fine. <laughs> um, and that should do it anyway. Oh, crack of pepper. That is how I would serve it at home anyway. But yeah, I would definitely cut my parsley a little bit finer or some really nice garlic chives cut super fine. Delicious. So for anyone that can't see that, minus the dribbles on the side, of course I would clean that up, especially if I'm taking a photo of it. Okay, so our chili beef pie. I am going to spoon some of this mixture. I'm just gonna do the one pie just to show you. But like I said, I could use this for lasagnas or whatever I want. This is a huge ramekin, so it's probably gonna take half the mixture. Okay, we'll do that. Although the drizzle over the edges does look good, doesn't it? Okay, so for the pie topper, like I said, this is a different one. You can use this like for a lasagna top and that as well too, instead of bechamel sauce. I'm gonna pop that, I can go in there. Really need to clean this bench, it's a bit, bit messy. Okay, so chili beef pot pies. Marry me chicken, done. The only thing left on my little mise in place was the garlic paste, because I actually used one. I just squeezed it straight out of the tube. Okay, so that's gone. Okay. So for the topping for this one, uh, I'm not sure, I don't think I read it out. So this is a cheesy yogurt top. You need three egg yolks. This might look really weird. There's a really light colored egg in there. Um, it looks kind of like lemon curd. <laughs> but anyway, three egg yolks. I always use room temperature, large, free range. Uh, three quarters of a cup of Greek yogurt. You can use our uh, three ingredient or two ingredient um, keto yogurt so you can make it home as well. Hello, everything okay? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, I've got Greek yogurt and sour cream in here. So three quarters of a cup of each. And I've got some Parmesan that I just did in the Thermomix because like you can whiz things up in that. Uh, this is 40 grams and I just do that um, 10 seconds speed 10. 
And I'm just gonna add that in and add my egg yolks in. Now, for those with clean Thermomix bowls, which I don't have right now, you could do this, pop this all into your mixer and just mix it for 15 seconds speed four. But right now, we're just gonna do this in the jug with less washing up. Okay, and you would season that with salt and pepper. You can see I like a little bit of pepper in everything. Do our salt. Alrighty. Now I'm going to just, uh, so I'm just checking, see, it says season to taste and spoon the yogurt onto the top of the chili. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes until golden. So we are going to pop this into the oven. Beautiful top. And we'll see how she comes out. So still with technical difficulties at the beginning and talking a lot and toing and froing, um, we're still going to have, we should still have all of these meals done within the hour, okay? So that could be, for us, this is a week's worth of food plus because we've even got the extra beef and that as well too. So, you know, there's a lot of food here. Okay, now we've got our cheeseburger soup over here. So that is in there now. I've just put it on, I think I put it on for 12 minutes, yes? Because I'll show you an alternative way um, and something that you'll see that I do differently sometimes just because I like things to look, you know, when I present it for food photography. I do some things to make it look a little bit prettier. And if you've got at a home, you can make it as well. I'm just going to move this marry me chicken over to here. Um, there's a cloth here. And I'm just going to, I should have just grabbed out my paper towel, but I did not. And we'll just wipe this bench over because it's a bloody mess. Okay, I'll pop that over there too because I don't need that again. But you can see that that makes plenty of that pie top too. So you can halve it if you want, like just a thin cut. And again, it will just reduce the fat down. For those chili beef pot pies, and the for people that are wanting the macros, the macros would be 586 kcal, 6 grams of net carbs, 26 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat. So as I said, you can remove the oil when you're browning the beef and the bacon. You can reduce the amount of either of those. You can use rindless bacon and um, the eye of the bacon. And the only other things that will bring the fat down is, of course, reducing the amount of the topping. So you can do that a lot thinner if you wish. Uh, and other alternative toppings you might even do, you could do like a really Mexican one. You could do like guacamole or something like that to go underneath a cheesy layer and then you could just finish it off without the egg yolks like I'm going to show you shortly okay that's another idea I'm going to have to try that um <laughs> the things I do okay so this other bit I should have put in while I was jibber jabbering okay so we've got our loaded um soup let's see let's show you what it looks like right now so right now we've just got a chunky beef tomato soup which could be enjoyed just like this. And I'm not kidding, this smells insanely good. This is like a really, really good soup. I know a lot of you already have our Super Tasty ebook. If you have not made the loaded cheeseburger soup yet, it's one I recommend. I would actually say this one is better than the Zupa. It was the one that actually disappeared the quickest in our house. Um, <laughs> and David, I ate a lot. So, and I've made it more than once. So in here, I'm now going to add the cream cheese and cream. So we've already got our uh, onion, garlic, beef, bacon, tomato puree, mustard, smoked paprika, beef stock, salt and pepper in the soup. Now we're adding uh, about 80 grams of the cream cheese. So that's roughly around about a third of your Philadelphia block. Uh, is this a third of a cup of cream or half a cup of cream? 
Oh, it's a quarter cup of cream. So I was like somewhere in between. Add the cream and the cream cheese. And we're going to cook that for five minutes. No, cancel that. Five minutes. If I'd remembered that this had to go back on, I would have done it at the same time. 100 degrees. Reverse. Stir. Okay, and then once that's done, it's done. We've just got to garnish it and stuff like that. So I'll get that out of the way. And that one out of the way. And we might put that on there. Just move these both over to here. And that over to here as well. And the kitchen hand can come in the door at any time. Um, and we've got a loaded cheeseburger soup. So hang on, I think I've got some cool bowls up here I haven't used in like forever. Oh. These are vintage, not really, but they're old, they're cute. Um, they just won't be in any of my photos, they're a bit too colourful for that. Um, okay. Clean that off. Get this out of the way. Alrighty. Um, so that's in the way. <laughs> that's in the way. It's because it's still hot. Um, we're going to be just showing off the pie when it comes out and how I would um, finish it off for me, just to make it look pretty. And we're going to have some soups ready soon. That will be delicious. We've already done our marry me chicken, which was amazing. The mar marry me chicken, again, that's something that can be um, done beautifully with pasta and that as well too. Any of these could go with our keto pasta. Uh, I'm just trying to find a soup spoon. Put one down there. Okay. Uh, but even now, like I said, that's just taken me less than an hour. So the servings, this soup makes six cups. So if you're going on a cup of a soup, because uh, it's quite filling, that's six meals. So that's th three days for two people. The pies is four serves. So that's two days for um, two people. So that's five days. And then we've got the marry me chicken, which serving size is, oh, geez. Um, how many serves? Three serves. I'd say that was four, easy um, for me. But we go on what the test is and that give us feedback on that as well. So it's 600 grams of chicken breast is what we used. You can use slightly more if you wanted to and actually have less sauce. So you can just add a little bit more cream and that extends that sauce really easily. But you can easily see that between all of these meals, we could have seven meals for two people for the whole week, all done in less than an hour. Uh, all with cheap ingredients. So we've got chicken, which we can do chicken breast. I find chicken breast tends to be cheaper than thighs these days. I don't think it's just me. Uh, all the other ingredients are all basic supermarket ingredients. The loaded cheeseburger soup and the chili beef pot pies, mints. Use whatever kind of mints that you want. Um, and all again, the majority of the ingredients are pantry ingredients, so it's spices. Which if you prefer, say for instance, the chili beef pot pies, it has cayenne pepper, cumin, coriander and paprika. You could easily swap that for one teaspoon only of our taco seasoning, simple. So if you've already made up some of my seasonings uh, or you have some of the amazing, I'm just looking at them all over there, mingle seasonings, you could use mingle ones. I would probably use in this spicy Mexican. I don't know what that smoky one is, it's turned on its side. Or barbecue lovers might even be great in this as well. Uh, so you can see like they're very, very cheap and easy recipes to make, but a full week. So if you're a one meal, a day kind of person, you've got all meals worked out. Can they be frozen? Yes, every one of these meals could be frozen. Uh, you could do the pies into ramekins and seal them even, um, and sous vide them if you wanted to. Uh, there's lots of different things. You could do them in a jar and sous vide them in the jar and eat them from the jar. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and you could sous vide in Thermomixes and that as well too. So nice, simple meals. Uh, and while if I was making this without talking to you, I could easily be doing fat hair dough into pie tops. So I could actually make a pastry pie top, which I just use with a large oversized egg ring and I just cut them and then I bake them and they're pre-baked. But then that also gives me mini pizza bases. I could do them into wraps. So we've got our keto wrap recipe. We've got our keto wrap recipe and we've got a 
low carb wrap. There's two different ones on the website. But the low carb ones is the fat hair ones. So you could use that and you could use that for a tortilla, which you could also use for your chili beef mints. And you could even still do that um, topping. You could even bake that topping and then scoop it on when it's baked because with the egg, it rises. Um, so yeah, that's pretty tasty. But yeah, nice easy meals. So the chili beef pot pie came out of our Keto Loco book. Um, I'll just find the picture of the recipe. Well, it is actually a picture that we chose for the event. Um, beef, beef, beef. Beef, beef, beef. I'll get there. At least you get to have a look at other recipes. So that's our chili beef pot pies. This is in the smaller ramekins. So like I said, it serves for four to six, depending on your um, size of your ramekins. I think these ones are roughly around about 200 gram, um, or they might be slightly less, 160 gram. Okay, so we now have our soup done. Uh, I don't know if I've got the ladle over here. No, I don't, but we've got mini ladle spoons. So when you do this, depending on how cold your uh, cream cheese is, it can still be a little bit chunky in this. So you can just turn it down. I'm just stirring it, probably with the wrong spoon because I was just using this for a ladle. So I could grab the spatula and then my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> and I'm just going to, oh, let's just see if we can just pour it in. We'll pour in part and then we'll scoop in some of the nice chunky bits. So you could add extra vegetable to this soup if you wish. Adding any vegetable adds carbs as we know. Uh, they all have them. You could add extra meat if you want. Now. This is where I said like you can sprinkle over your cheese. I like to put a little bit underneath. Then I sprinkle on, oh, hang on. Oh, hang on, let me have a look at that pie. Oh, it looks perfect. Let's turn that off. Okay. Um, that mince. So we've got a little bit of our beef and bacon here, which I'm going to pop a little bit on the top. Sad thing is, like, I really wish you could see this. I really need to have something that zooms in onto here. A little bit more of this. Just so it's got some on the top. Sprinkle of this. Extra pickles. Then what I like to do, always make sure, one, that the lid's on before you do that. That would have been funny if it wasn't. Um... <laughs> I always like to just do an extra little drizzle of that over the top. Now, I actually do have a few little herbs here from my garden and it's just some fresh coriander. And I just put a little bit of that on the top. Now, you can't see, <laughs> but it looks pretty. And if you wanted to do a big dollop of sour cream or something like that, you could do that or guacamole or even diced cucumber. At the moment with shepherd's cucumbers in season and between a dollar and a dollar 20 locally for us anyway. Over the top of that, delicious. The avocado is a must if you ask me. But anyway, and definitely extra pickles. You want to put pickles on there. Anyone that doesn't like pickles is not my friend. <laughs> you are, but... I don't like you as much because pickles are amazing. Okay, we've got our pie. Now, where's this? I am just going, this is just because I'm just doing this for something else. I'm just going to take that. A little bit of like the tomato meaty fat, all the flavour. Just take that off at the moment because one of my little tricks is one of these. If you're going to do a dinner party and you want to do these just like nice and fancy, just get on there and do the little bit of the 
blackened bit. And then you got something. So when you're like, I know a lot of people look at my uh, tostada stack, which is in slow cook keto. Perfect for this time of year. So slow cook keto, every recipe can be done in your sandwich and that as well too, just FYI. But we have, really helps if I know the pages, a stack in here, which a lot of people ask about this one all the time. So if you haven't seen that picture before, you can see it's got like the beautiful black flex. That's just done with my butane torch. So black flex, black flex, just makes it really nice on the pie. And I did put a spoon down somewhere. We'll just grab another one because what's more washing up in the scheme of things. And you can see that this is like gooey, but cheesy eggy stuff as well so it's like saucy but you can see like there's this thick bit and that as well too it's like divine so these you could do in the individual ramekins and you can also do in a large bake you could again still use our um, pasta into lasagna sheets and make it into a lasagna and that as well too with the spice without the spice taco spice whatever you do you could even Chuck a few of these on the top or oh, jalapenos would be great. Um, and we've got our marry me chicken. So pretty much, move these out of the way. Seven days. Megan's just touching the hot bowl. What an idiot. Seven meals, two people. I don't know what the budget would be, but we used a kilo of beef for everything, including that whole extra bowl that I've still got here that I have not used, but I've got a large zucchini in my crisper. So fry up some zucchini or just chuck it all into the pan together and reheat the meat and the zucchini. So the zucchini just gets that little bit tender uh, or asparagus would be great. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, whatever you want, chuck it in the stir fry. Um, you could add it into more pies. You could add it into your other pie mix if you wanted to um, and add more into the soup, whatever's up to you. And then we've got our marry me chicken um, as well. Like I said, all of these recipes can be frozen. They can all be made ahead of time. If you're going to reheat the marry me chicken, do it over gentle heat so you don't split the cream. Or if you're not going to make it straight away, don't put the cream in yet. Just get everything ready. You could even put these into Ziploc bags into your meal portions. I would cook the chicken first so then you get just a few more days. I'm always tentative. You saw that I actually opened up the uh, cryovac bag that I had. I get mine delivered from the butchers. I know in that cryovac bag, it can stay in my fridge for a week and it's still like perfect chicken. Get chicken from a supermarket. I wouldn't even keep it longer than two, two days in my, in my fridge. Even though like my fridge is like temperature controlled and we don't have kids opening and closing the fridge all the time. Um, I just find the supermarket chicken always just goes off really quickly. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the little show today of these simple recipes. Um, I would be interested in getting feedback if it was something that you were interested in seeing more of, of showing you how to make some budget-friendly, quick and easy recipes that everyone can enjoy. Um, I think, you know, these are recipes that are all loaded, loaded with flavour um, that would really work out and I'll try and work out how much it roughly cost to make on those three recipe sheets so that you can actually know just how much this would add to your budget <laughs> to do for the week. So let's have a quick look. Um, loving all the tips. Oh, I will have to give these a burl. Dave's going to be busy with the cleaner. <laughs> By pickles, do you mean gherkins? Deborah, so yes, dill pickle, gherkins. Uh, I don't think you'll ever find, the, I think there might be a brand. Gherkins are often used with sugar. So the um, Polskio Gorky, I think that's a kind of way because there's different brands of Polskio Gorky. I'll have to look at what it is. Polish pickle. That's what it is. It has no sugar. So there's no sweeteners in this one. So for 100 grams even of these pickles, you're only talking the vegetable uh, uh, carb quantity is only at 2.7 grams because obviously cucumbers come... Uh, with carbs 
So you can make your own. Um, we have an amazing uh, pickled jalapeno or pick pickled jalapeno escabeche recipe on the website. You can use that same pickle recipe for any pickle. So you could make the, um, the pickle juice without putting the jalapenos in it with your baby cucumbers if you've got those. I've seen a lot of people using, um, growing this year, the little uh, Mexican cucumbers, the little mini baby egg ones. Your chocos, you could do the same sort of thing. So you could do them um, into spears, whole, slice, like the bread and butter pickles and stuff like that too. But just check if you're going to get gherkin um, specifically. It depends on where you are in the world uh, if it's loaded with sugar because a lot of them are. Can you please take photos of the finished meals and post on Facebook? I can do that. Um, oh my God, it looks divine. Um, will it be available after the live? Yes. Our Mary Me Jerk and Chicken serves the two of us twice. Good value. Yeah, Karen. So in other words, four serves out of the Mary Me Chicken and Karen is one of our testers in that as well too. So I would definitely say that even though, you know, I put some of the chicken back away and I've still got that and I've still got this in the pan. So there were still two extra fillets that I didn't cook as well. So I would definitely say you could easily push to four. You'll find that it's quite filling um, and that as well. And it depends on what you serve these with. So if you're going to, you know, make it and you want to stretch it further or serve it with a little bit of the keto pasta, zoodles, a vegetable, a little bit of spinach or a bit of mash, rice, um, cauliflower rice, of course, all those different things, even a little bit of keto bread just to mop up the sauce. Um, it will extend the, the meal further. And if you're like me, I'm like one of those people that tend to like, it's funny, I commented um, on Sugar Free London today and I said like, I love snack foods, like I like smaller foods, but you just eat them all in, the, in your window as one meal, you know what I mean? Like I could sit down with just a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that, not as eating that whole thing, and that would be my meal, you know? So <laughs> I like to have different flavors, I guess, in littler meals um, rather than a big meal of the same thing. But in saying that, we did love that. We ate that the next day, um, and ours all disappeared too <laughs> in two days, and it will again. Uh, cheeseburger, cheeseburger soup is awesome. Yes, it is. It really is a delicious soup. And when you add the cheese, uh, I've just ruined it for the photos now, you get like those nice cheese strings and that as well too. So that's good. Um, oh, that's big call on this one. Why marry me chicken? Uh, marry me chicken, I think, I did look it up at Sicilian. It's just supposed to be that it's so good um, that when people eat it, they go, oh, marry me. Because, you know, you've cooked them such a good meal that you must become their husband or wife. That's why. <laughs> it's funny um naming of recipes i once you know I, I worked in commercial kitchens and, and in restaurants and cafes and stuff and i once made up this slice because i've always been a recipe developer and everyone's like what are you going to call it and i call it you want one and, it, and people would come into the shop and they'd say what's that and i go you want one and they're like no what's the name of it? what kind of slices and I go if you want one so you want one slice it's this name because you want it. <laughs> so, you know, it's, yeah, dumb names, but, you know, you just come up with these names and people uh, like to try it because it makes it sound better. You know, if I said it was the ultimate marry me chicken, you'd have to try it because it says the ultimate, right? Um, Love Your Live has been following since your Thermomix Live. Oh, thanks, Daniela. Um, which books are these recipes from, please? Okay, so Marry Me Chicken's just on the website, so it's one of our newest recipes out. The chili beef pot pies are in, uh, I just said it, didn't I? Keto Loco. And the cheeseburger soup is in our new ebook, uh, which is super tasty. So our books, uh, our big ones are all the Keto Loco, uh, Slow Cook Keto, and these all have Thermomix methods and, as well as conventional as well, and your macros and all that sort of stuff. So Slow Cook Keto, so this is either for your Slow Cook Kerr, Slow Cook Kerr, <laughs> or oh, Thermomix. Um, we have Keto Mojo, which has conventional methods, so stovetop or oven based recipes or chopping board versus Thermomix. And as well, we put in air fryer into that one. Oops. And then hiding over in the corner, we have the Healthy Family Keto Cookbook, which is based on the um, at the time I wrote this one, which was 2019, yes. 
Um, sorry, I had to remember. It was based on the top 100 meals um, on a list of like the top 100 meals globally of most popular kind of meals. So um, the front one being lemon chicken, Chinese lemon chicken, which a lot of people love. We have everyday keto, again, that has all your thermomix and conventional methods. That is just great recipes that you can enjoy every day for easy meal planning, fast and delicious. And then we have a little lunchtime one as well too. That has some thermal methods for some of them, some of them aren't suitable or they've now been developed into suitable recipes for thermal methods, but weren't at the time of uh, writing that one, which was back in early 2019. So yeah, that's all the recipes um, that we've done today and where they're from. And like I said, I'm happy to do some from the books and that occasionally and also do some meal planning ones if this is something that you would like. Um, we are starting to get ready and start researching. Well, I haven't started researching. I've already researched and already made a list for our next cookbook. That's Stormy saying hello. Uh, and I've just decided today to start to think whether I want to stay with our usual format. So for anyone that's watching that has my cookbooks, namely um, these three, because these are quite similar in our layout that we do, um, desserts, dinners, light meals, and brunch sort of style meals, all different kinds of recipes. Would you prefer that I stay this way? Of course, different recipes in every one of them, so every book's completely different. Um, but either do it the same sort of style or if we go down and do a fast and easy low carb edition. So it would be Mad Creations fast, easy and healthy kind of cookbook. I don't know. That would be based on where I would do recipes that would all take, I would try and aim for under 20 minutes, but we'll say a half an hour because some people aren't as quick as me and you know, I know everyone's different in the kitchen, but less than 30 minute meals, budget based and fast and easy methods. So nothing would be, if we went down that way, that would mean that you wouldn't get anything and say like a lasagna that might take 30 minutes in the oven. So that's where you have to decide what we want to do. <laughs> but you know, I can, I can flick it either way now because it's now that I start to do it, this is for um, either late, this year or for next year. But anyway, love to hear from anyone who actually already has our books or those who don't, who might be looking for that. Of course, we do do all our recipes as quickly and as easily as I can. You can see all of these recipes take bugger all time. The ingredients mostly are pantry ingredients. So even those books that say five ingredients and they've got five main ingredients and 20 pantry ingredients, no different in mine, just not 20 pantry ingredients, <laughs> less than that. But you know, we still try and do all our recipes quickly and easy because I hate stuffing around in the kitchen. Plus, you've got to remember that every recipe that I ever write, I have to make photograph, test, and put it in a little book as well in a time frame. So I don't do recipes that tend to take, you know, hours of preparation and stuff like that anyway. But I'm willing to listen to everyone at this stage. Okay, I'm just gonna have a look at the final questions and then we'll knock off because it's been an hour and a half, but yes. Everything was made under an hour. That was great. And if I go shortly, I'll have time to quickly take some photos of things that don't look terrible. Um, have all the books. I like a bit of a challenge, so maybe do a bit of both. I'm not going to split the book two different ways. It makes it too difficult. And it's hard enough to tell everyone now that we've got two different methods. We do supermarket ingredients. We're low carb. Um, you know, there's so much that's already into every one of our books that if I start going, oh, you get half of it's all fast and easy and this chapter's all on that, it's, it's, I think it's just setting up a rod for my own back that every book then after I have to do, you know, a whole chapter on, you know, 20 minute meals, one pot meals, you know, I don't know, slow cooking meals, etc. I'd rather just do one thing. If we do a fast and easy edition, we've done fresh and easy keto previously, which was our Christmas ebook in 2018, um, but it would be kind of faster than that. So we'd be looking at meals that you're going to quickly like prep, bash out in less than 20 minutes, lots of stir fries, um, you know, salad, thing, warm salads, stuff like that, stuff that's really easy. Uh, da, da, da. I get the same when people ask me what is my last name. 
Okay, I think we're done. So I'll let you, um, I'll let you all go. Thank you for anyone who watched from beginning to end. If you only just jumped on now, you'll be able to watch the playback. And if you watch through, you'll be able to get the recipes if you do not have the book. I won't be adding any PDFs because these are recipes that are out of my books, except for one. Um, but if you want to buy the books, I think Dave put in a link in the threads, uh, in the thread, <laughs> in the event thread, so that you can actually go and check out all of our books. We have the six in the hard copies at the moment, and we have 35 plus eBooks of all different kinds. So if you're looking for meal plans, looking for egg fast, looking for pescatarian recipes or all desserts recipes, you're going to find something in there, okay? Uh, if you loved this event, please give the event a like and leave a comment for us. And if you'd like to see more of them, let me know in this thread as well so that I can start planning someone's, some better and maybe look at some meal planning for the week for all meals um, that are quick and easy, whether they're recipes out of our books or just completely ones that I make up with what we've got on hand in our pantry on the day. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye.